Let's take a last look at Conrad Kurz. Now before we do, uh, I would like to remind everyone that I have on record stated that I don't like Forge World's resins. Uh, I don't like a lot of their sculpts. I find that uh, for what they charge, their stuff could be a lot better. I have now worked uh, with a lot of their miniatures, <clears throat> sometimes against my better judgment. Um, and I have found their stuff to generally be underwhelming, if not terrifying, to work with. However, their Primark stuff seems to be pretty good. Now I've worked with Ferris Manus and Fulgrim stuff, Dorn several times, and now Conrad Kurz. And I have found that this miniature was uh, actually quite excellent. Um, out of the box, he had little to no um, lines that needed to be removed, um, nothing warped and destroyed that needed to be replaced. Uh, and this piece was actually quite uh, quite fun to work with. It's a, It really is a, a great sculpt. And that was kind of uh, part of the challenge during this build, is that I didn't want to destroy a lot of the existing detail because it's so great. Whoever sculpted this did a, did a great job, and I'm glad that they are casting these properly to really uh, do it justice. Now the client wanted more of a combat pose rather than the original Batman on a fence post karate pose. Which is very cool, but it's very much a diorama pose. And this is more of a combat pose. He wanted Conrad to be dodging in combat while he's attacking or maybe uh, sprinting, you know. So in the spirit of trying to keep the original detail, which is so good in this miniature, and change up the pose, we had to make some very careful uh, cuts. First thing we did was remove the right leg. You can see here, remove the right leg and we had to pin it, reposition it, and then sculpt in that gap. Okay, and this um, took the leg from a uh, position like this to a position like this, as if he were dodging this way. The stomach was also removed, as well as the pelvic area. All that was carved out and smoothed, and then the area was pinned, gap-filled, and then this stomach armor had to be replaced. So we did this, uh, these scales over the, uh, the, the main plate. The belt is just a simple line there with, uh, as you can see here, a belt buckle that tries to uh, kind of mimic the patterning, the, the lines of the armor a little bit. Did you know that Conrad has no ranged weapon besides throwing knives? Yes, in the year uh, th three thirty thousand, when everyone has guns and cannons and nukes and lasers, this dude's running around with throwing knives because because I'm Batman. Because he's Batman. That's stupid. Anyways, so they gave him throwing knives, which we attached here with a little little line. Uh, his arms were cut at the elbow here and the shoulders so they could be repositioned, pinned and repositioned, and then gap filled. You can kind of see the milliput right there, that gap there. This arm was repositioned as well. There's milliput filling in that gap, which looks ugly right now, but it uh, won't be seen once it's painted. That's just to be able to allow his arm to actually be in this position. This pad needed its under pauldron removed and then raised so that it could actually uh, accommodate, accommodate that, uh, that pose. Um, other than that, the head, the hair was removed to make it able to turn a little bit more this way. And the base, the rock here was simply cut and then positioned in such a way that it could be pinned. And the client can easily remove that if he wants to do something with the base. The budget called for what we were doing here and not uh, a base work job. Uh, and lastly, the claws. Now, the claws are very diminutive. Not only do this, they give this guy weensy little throwing knives, but they give him they give him weeny little claws as well, which the client wanted replaced, and I don't blame him. Seriously, this this I mean, I thought Dorn was bad with his mini chain sword, but these these little these little uh, nose pickers are all that Conrad comes with, which is silly. Now all the fanboys might be saying, well, that's all he needs. Mm -hmm. Let's give him something more. So we gave him some batwing shaped blades out of plastic card. These were stacked in layers on top of each other, cut and then um, shaped so that they all came out pretty, uh, pretty much the same. 
then the bottom blades were shortened just a little bit because it gives it more of a uh, it give, makes it more interesting if they're different sizes it also means that if you're looking at them from the top down kind of breaks up that outline just makes it look more jagged more like the uh, well like the bones of a I don't know a, a bat's wings or dragon wings or something it just look cool that's all the reason you need right it just looks cool the uh, head is not attached the claws are lightly attached um, he is only lightly attached most of this is going to be disassembled for um, safety of travel when I ship it so that the client can paint oh there you go see just barely lightly glued in there just for demonstration um, so that he can paint and then assemble you know when he receives this of course the cloak still fits underneath the pauldrons really easy it's just a bit of blue tack holding it there for demonstration purposes if you would like to make breakable toys like this join us on the patreon where we do lots of tutorials where we learn how to make these plates how we learn how to cut and reposition joints and sculpt under armor and a bunch of other stuff so check us out at patreon.com slash last light creative you can also check us out uh, on instagram of course and youtube if you are a Patreon, Patreon supporter, thank you so much. Please get a hold of me on Discord if you need something, and not through Patreon itself, since Patreon does not really send me messages in a timely manner. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much, guys.